Kara, I'm I'm Caden. You might have seen me on Sunday, where I gave a nice big long speech about who I am. And um, yeah, uh, last week I gave a bit of a um, speech in ISO to as a sort of like introduction to what um, I'm going to be talking about, which is queer rights versus the far right. Um, a quick rundown on what we talked about in that last meeting was just like the history of uh, the homosexual law reform bill and um, and how that came to be, like the, the struggle that went through to come to get to that point, um, as well as talking a bit about um, how like where where the the law actually came from where it originated in uh, Britain and a lot of the British laws came into effect here as, as um, New Zealand was established as one of the British colonies. Um, and then we also got to talk about uh, things like uh, trans rights in New Zealand and how um, disproportionately there are some pretty terrible statistics based around uh, the well-being, the mental health, um, employment, and and such of of trans people, as well as um, as well as uh, intersex rights and how um, intersex children are largely. Um, have surgery forced upon them without their consent or even their, the consent of their parents. <laughs> um, today, we are going to be speaking a bit more in the future. Um, I will begin uh, speaking about the wonderful late Georgina Bayer, who has recently, very recently passed, which is very sad. But um, she did a lot in her time in Aotearoa, um, where uh, she was the first openly transgender mayor and MP um, elected into council in 1993 and for um, uh, Carterton, and was re-elected in 1998. Um, she would later seek to, um, she'd later end up in parliament as uh, part of the Labour Party. And um, in 2004, when um, the Civil Unions Act was becoming a thing, um, Destiny Church showed up on parliament's doorstep to um, protest it, and she was there with a rainbow flag to welcome them. Um, she, she said how she was fine with their right to protest, even though she didn't agree. And she wanted to sort of offer them a challenge by being there as the face of the rainbow community in New Zealand, which uh, Brian Tamaki seems to have great issue with. Miss <laughs> um, Georgina, Breyer had a pretty pretty difficult upbringing, which is kind of um, kind of goes to show with a lot of like queer people. Uh, she was she was raised in a um, in a fairly sort of conservative and uh, religious um, space as she grew older. Um, she her mother um, divorced her father. At a, at a young age and um, for a while she ended up in um, the Salvation Army shelters, which were very, very not accepting of her and her queerness as she came to realize that she was not who everyone thought her to be. Um, they would try to, and many things they would try to like assault her, like beat the gay out of her and that sort of thing. And it's it's all it's all very sad. Um, she then left when she was old enough and worked on the streets as a sex worker. Um, including uh, she ended up being horribly um, abused in Australia during 
while she was doing work as a sex worker. And a lot of people just kind of didn't care and kind of thought that she deserved it for being gay, for being a trans woman and for being a sex worker. Like, um, trannies are the lowest of the low. You belong in the gutter and that's where a lot of us ended up is what she said in a um, radio recording interview on RNZ. Um, she, she often faced abuse and eventually had a lot of trouble um, grappling with her mental health because of the abuse she suffered. But after, after, after this, she came out of it realizing that she wanted better. And so came back to New Zealand to try make things better, becoming the mayor of Carterton and then running for um, parliament where she, um, she went up against the, the, the likes of, um, what's his name? Uh, Paul Henry, yeah. He went up against, she went up against Paul Henry, who made a real fool of himself by, by, cause somebody asked, one of, an interviewer asked him if, what his um, view of, of Georgina Bayer was. And he said, oh, well, I have a pretty interesting life story too. And I stayed as a man, basically. And it's just like, well, good for you, mate. <laughs> Um, so she was very, um, sad when, um, she, when, uh, there was like talks about, um, some environmental, um, stuff to do with like, uh, searching for gas off, offshore and stuff. And she was basically there pressured by a lot of the Labour Party to support, um, drilling for gas and natural resources whereas she as a um as a person of maori descent was not okay with that but she had to she was forced to push that aside for the sake of the party and she has always regretted it <laughs> um so yeah we will we will we love georgina and thank her for everything that she has done to get us where we are today. And speaking of today, um, I will move forward to a recently um, passed legislation, uh, the, the conversion therapy bill, which passed on 15th of February, 2022, which was legislation to protect the rights of the rainbow community and passed its third reading. Uh, the Justice Select Committee received almost 107,000 public submissions on the Conversion Practices Prohibition Legislation Bill, which is the highest number of public submissions on a piece of legislation uh, in, in New Zealand to date. Um, the legislation defines a conversion practice as a practice, sustained effort, or treatment that is directed at someone because of their sexual orientation, gender, and gender expression, and done with the intention of changing or suppressing their sexual orientation, gender, or gender expression. Um, Chris Fafoy says, for clarity, the legislation also lays out what is not conversion practice and, pro and protects the right to express opinion, belief, religious belief, or principle, which is not intended to change or suppress a person's sexual orientation, gender, or gender expression. This legislation is not looking to criminalize um, open and respectful conversations which aim to facilitate help and support where someone is wrestling with their sexuality. Um, under the former G leader Judith Collins, National voted against the bill at its first reading, which put a strain on the party's liberal and conservative factions um, and caused uh, 
Judith to lose her seat as the leader and was and become replaced with uh, Christopher Luxon, who who said that said with the caucus that um, everyone should uh, go in with what they believed on on the vote vote with their conscience. Uh, 25 national MPs supported the legislation and eight opposed it. Um, those who opposed were Simon Bridges, who sat in on the public oral submissions, Simeon Brown, Melissa Lee, Todd McClay, Simon O'Connor, Chris Pink, um, Shane Retty, and Michael Woodhouse. Um, Chanel Lar, Chanel Lal, leader of the End Conversion Therapy New Zealand, said the bill's passing was not just a win for the rainbow community, but a win for humanity. This is something that's very personal to me as well. When I was a young child, my community was given the choice of picking between their church and their child. I wish that they saw the broken heart of the child, um, which is... Uh, reference to when Lal was volunteering at Middlemore Hospital at 17 and were, was approached by a church leader who offered to pray the gay away. And when, when Lal refused, the church leader told them they would end up in hell. <laughs> at 17, the idea of going to hell scared me. At 22, it makes perfect sense with my fantasy. If all queer people are going to hell, that's where I want to be. <laughs> um, Lau said they were proud that Parliament had passed the bill, but they said there were improvements that were needed because it didn't yet protect all of rainbow communities. They said the bill just laid the foundation for further change. Um, Act Deputy Leader Brooke Van Velden acknowledged the people with first-hand experience of conversion practices, saying, I really cannot express how that must feel, is extremely brave. But, and she also went on to say there was criticism that the bill either didn't go far enough or that it went too far. I want to acknowledge that there are valid views on both sides from people who, who are just expressing their genuinely held beliefs. Um, from my own experience in the lead up to the ban, there were a lot of discussions around what it would mean for the victims of conversion therapy. I mean, not what the victims, what it would mean for the victims. Um, but on those who would seek to impose these practices on vulnerable people, National Party MP Simon Bridges pushed a narrative about protecting families, how having a supportive and affirming approach to young people, particularly children, coming out as queer could be damaging to these families, that this legislation would encroach upon religious freedoms and on medical practitioners who didn't agree with queer people's rights to exist. Special attention was paid to the trans community with young trans people's knowledge of who they are, who they themselves see themselves to be, meaning less to the right-wing politicians and the right for their families to suppress and seek out therapy that would place great scrutiny on these young people and their identity. Groups like Speak Up For Women campaigned hard against the bill, claiming gender transition itself is a form of conversion therapy and thus shouldn't be protected. They claimed this while claiming to support the rights of lesbians and gay men, whereas their support of lesbian and gay men pretty obviously came to an end as soon as trans people came a part of it. In 2022, June 16, at around 1 a.m., Rainbow Youth um, and Gender Dynamics at Tairanga's office uh, was burned to the ground. Um, the Rainbow Youth Executive Director, Puya Sub, Sub Baramian, I hope I got that, that correct. I'm very sorry if I have not, <laughs> um, told RNZ they were devastated by the news, not just for ourselves, but for our wider community in Tauranga. Really just feels quite shocking. Um, they were yet to receive any com 
confirmation of the nature of the fire, but said they had said they had not been subject to hate crimes in Tehranga before. Between the fire and the recent alleged incidents of bullying and bigotry at Bethlehem College, also in Tehranga, by students and staff, which was another story that was around the same time and kind of feels like might have been correlated or connected, but that's there's nothing really there to confirm that. Um, it was it, later to men... Um, two men would be found guilty of having um, started the fire um, and were sentenced, um, but the judge found it as not a hate crime. Um, judge Ingram said it was clear from the medical report and other material that uh, both men suffered mental health and intellectual disabilities and um, it actually turns out that um, the arsonist himself uh, was being taken advantage of and was actually bribed with $100 to commit the act. Um, and both these men were um, a part of um, the... Um, both these men were a part of a of the Turning Point Trust's... Um, art um thing which is for uh to help people with mental health problems and addiction issues uh receive help and um resources so it's it's a bit sad it's not necessarily like an act of um hatred though the person who did uh bribe the other man was very clearly had uh some bias saying that um that will teach them for being gay um that he was going to burn down those um expletive to the ground um to the arsonist as a means of like pressuring him um next up we have uh the protests that happened on the weekend um with Kelly J. Keen Minchel coming to New Zealand after, after her um, tour around Australia, <laughs> um, where she had, uh, which was attended by Nazi from uh, near Nazis from a group known as a uh, National Socialist Network, which is led by Tom Sewell, um, a man which the uh, Christchurch shooter um, has ties to actually who um tom Sewell had actually asked this man to um join his his um little group and um as you might have heard um there was another um sighting of neo-nazis at um the auckland protest um i was mistaken in my original speech, speech on Sunday by claiming this was Action Zealandia. Turns out it is not. It's a, another um, another group of neo-Nazis which are more linked towards uh, Christ, Christo-fascism and um, trad Catholicism, where um, they promote extreme genocidal anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia, and Islamophobia. And it's it's quite concerning to see these kinds of um, these kinds of rhetorics making like such a such a big um, return to to like the public consciousness. And um given the way things have went on over the um, weekend with um, Marma Davison, the way um, quickly the shift of like the, the discussion around what happened, where it was, oh, uh, this is a problem for, for freedom of speech. Um, this, was a, this was a horrible protest. Uh, why don't we should let women speak? to um because Marama brought dared to bring up that um white cis men uh statistically have have been like 
seen as a, as committing a lot of the abuses and crimes towards women. Um, and now it's just become a discussion about, oh, this is, can't believe she said this. And it's just like, we should really be just like talking about what we can do to um, change, to change this thing. Um, in conclusion, I want to say as much as there has been um, sub talk around uh, the way fundamental Christian fundamentalists have their attitude towards uh, gays, lesbians, and trans people, and how much that has to do with um, the the um, struggle for queer rights and liberation. Um, there's nothing actually wrong with with religion itself. Um, I've known plenty of Christians and and such who are totally cool with it, but I do think we need to we need to speak about how how Christian fundamentalism, uh, trad Catholicism and such, um, has contributed to to these hateful ideologies, not just towards uh, queer and trans people but towards uh, Muslims and other faiths and other minorities as well. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you all for coming.